Before we get started, I want to thank everybody for commenting about the driver for this laser engraver. And if you're interested, stick around to the end of this video and I'll update you on the situation, what's been going on, where we are, and uh, ask you for even more advice and help. But never mind that, let's get on with the project in hand. The YouTube channel Kayakosaurus sent us over these molds. And if you don't know that channel, this guy is an amazing, <laughs> he's an amazing dinosaur sculptor. I mean, the level of detail and accuracy and realism just blows me away. And he made these molds. And uh, I don't really know if I'm happy to have them or <laughs> if I'm miserable because these are two-part clay-up molds. And it's like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> if you know me, you know that I am not a fan of this style of mold. But before we cast the aspersions on these molds, let's cast some resin and see how they work. So our first challenge is they're not round, they're block shaped. So when we put the rubber bands on said block shaped molds, we immediately start having difficulties. The rubber bands are pulling primarily at the corners. They're not pulling at all. They're not putting any pressure here in the middle. None. Zero. All the pressure is, is pulling across here and almost all of it's concentrated at the corners. This is why in the early part of my career when I was making molds that look like this, I couldn't figure out why part of my model had very little flash, very small amount, and other parts of it had lots and lots of flash and it never made any sense to me until I realized there was no, there's no pressure holding this together. So if you're gonna catch flash, it's gonna be here in the middle. And there's another flaw to this mold, something I see right away that I do not like at all. And that is, let me dig out a pencil. Notice these parting lines right here, here and here. Notice that they're almost parallel to the line of pull, which means there's nothing holding them closed in this direction. There's absolutely nothing holding them closed in that direction or that direction or this direction. It's just the only thing that's pushing on them is the body of the rubber itself. If you're gonna get flash, it's in places like that that you're gonna get flash. Ideally, you want your parting line to be perpendicular to the line of pull and you want the pull pressure to be even and that way you get a nice even close and you get small parting lines. There's another thing that's worrying me a little bit. I picked this up and I went, uh-oh, how old is this mold? Is this, I think this mold's been around a while and it's still giving up juice. Hmm, that is not good. All of them, as you can see, are giving up uh, some, they're, they're out gassing something, they're dripping something. That is not a good sign. Here's another thing I don't like. This is a pretty good sized chunky mold. Look at that little dinky funnel. I want a nice big fat funnel where I don't have to use any skill. I just pour it in there. Look, here's, there's none, there isn't even a funnel. I gotta dribble that resin in there. Oh, I'm mental. It makes me mental. Oh. All right, mixed up some resin. I have absolutely no idea how much resin this is gonna take because I don't have any numbers. I don't have a model to weigh. I don't have anything. I'm just going on Make up some resin and pour it in there and see what happens. I'm not using fast cast, I'm using the regular sill cast from Silpak because that'll give me a little more time. Fast cast with these little nozzles? I don't think so. It's already getting warm, this resin. This is a 50 gram batch. And we'll see if that's enough. If it's not, next time I'll know to make more. I can estimate based on the fill how much more I would need on the second pour round. La di da, la di da. I'm waiting for it to come up, those 8,000 vents. There's 8 million vents all along there. Come on up, come on up, kids. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Oh, I hate those tiny little vents. It is so hard to get that resin up those vents. And if the resin doesn't come up the vents and it comes under pressure, it can cause voids. It's coming up here. In theory, the resin should be coming up. I think it is. It's taking its time, but I think it's coming up. It's, it's getting to gel now. It's definitely syrup now. It's no longer resin. So it's very hard for that syrup to come up those little shoots. Okay, let's pressurize it. Let's see what we get. While we wait for the first mold to cure up in the tank, let's talk about this mold. And it has a feature that I also particularly do not like. And that is, if you look at the top, you see all of the vent holes 
That means that when you pour the resin down this little hole, it's got to rise up through this lid and make all these little spikes of hardened resin rising up through the lid. Shame on you. Bad mold, bad. What this needs is just a radical redesign. On this big mold here, I put a lot of rubber bands so that you get kind of even overall pressure. Lots and lots of smaller rubber bands are way better than two or three big bands that don't give you even pressure. Again, always with this idea of, of having the most even gentle pressure on the mold halves gives you the, late, the least distortion in the rubber and therefore you don't get the shifting parting lines which leaves flash which means hours of sanding cleanup on the castings. There's no pressure here but it's even something simple like strips of wood uh, this could be strips of cardboard glued together it can be anything you have. Uh, I don't like these sharp edges so it's worth the time to take a few seconds and just pop these in. Now what you have is a system where at least there's more pull along on the sides. It's not perfect. Ideally, you'd put a piece of wood and build a cradle. I've done that many times on this channel where I build those kind of cradles. But even something as simple as this is better than this, which has no help at all. You still see the distortion of the rubber right at the edge, the pull on that edge. The other thing you want to be careful of is you don't want to block any of your vents. So this is better. It's not perfect, but it's better. Now, how we doing? How we doing? When this cup says that's ready, let's go pull that first casting out of the tank. All right. Let us see what we got. Have we succeeded? Is there any hope at all? that will get a semi-decent casting out of this mold? One never knows. You don't know till you know. This could be a calamity. Okay. We've got all them sticks sticking out, don't we? Don't like, don't, don't like them. Let's see if I can get this to come apart. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I mean, look at this. I'm telling you guys, look at this guy. <laughs> Holy moly, that's nice. All right, you know what? I would say I'm not, uh, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. Let's evaluate. Here's a pretty good example of what I'm talking about with flash that's very hard to, to, to close up because the mold just didn't close in this area. So this area here is all flash. It's very thin, it's not bad. It's going to cut, you know, it's going to clean out easy. <sighs> Some flash in here. I mean, you can just tell by the sculpt that this guy is uh, an incredible craftsman. And he put the same kind of craft and care into his mold as he did into the sculpt. The problem is he doomed himself from, from the start with the wrong mold strategy, I think, anyway. In my opinion, notice how much easier it is to cut the sprues off when the resin is fresh like this. You wait 24 hours and these things will be rock hard. A lot more work to cut it off. I always like to cut my sprues and vents as soon as the piece comes out of the mold because I'm lazy and I want to get it done. And I want to get it done when the rubber, when the resin is still pretty soft as clay up molds go. This mold is nicely crafted. It really doesn't have horrendous parting lines. It's got parting lines everywhere. You can see them running around the body. See like right here, can you see that one on that leg? So hard to avoid. And it's not like you're going to avoid a hundred percent of parting lines on a one-piece cut mold because you're not. You can't avoid some parting lines as two-part mold makers go. I'm giving him very high marks. It's a pretty clean casting. It really is. And of course, I mean, look at the detail and stuff this guy puts in his work and the anatomy and everything else. Super nice. Very high level of craft. Lots of time and energy went into these molds. All right, here we go. Let's see what we got. Oh, wow. 
Well, pretty nice. I'm not seeing any bubbles. Now, question is, we got all of these vents running in the wrong direction. That's why I like to pull things when it's soft. This is why I'm prejudiced against vents that run like these ran. So now these, what do we do about these? Do we pull them this way? Yeah, I guess we just pull them out. Gotta make sure you get them all. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this, this style of venting at all for this exact reason. Gotta make sure you get them all. They're kind of tricky to pull out. You wanna try to design, if you, as much as you can, you wanna try to design molds that don't have these features. So this is how I would set this piece up in the mold. I would hang the head vertical, and the blue area is the funnel and the sprue where the resin flows in. The white lines are the vents, and that's how the air would escape out of the top of the piece. The area with the squiggly blue lines tells you where I'd cut the mold, and the thin yellow line would be the parting line you'd have to clean on the sculpt. Notice it only goes part way around, and also notice there's absolutely no cutting, no parting lines, no nothing on the critical areas all around the face and head. So the vents, the sprues, and the part would all lay in the same single parting line, and you wouldn't have any of the complexities you have with this original mold. Let's pour this big mold here. Okay, resin's getting warm. Let's go, go, go. All right, pulled this boy out of the tank. Let us see what we got. Ready? Let's see. Ooh, that's nice. Look at that. Look at that, you guys. If you want to see an example of a pretty nice two-part clay up mold, you're looking at one right here. That's about as good as they get. You can see the flash that I'm always harping about. You can see that the, this flash was in the middle of the mold, right exactly all of the, see all this? It's the worst flash is right here in the middle of this long, skinny mold. That's what I'm talking about. The worst of it is in the areas where you have the hardest time, where the mold doesn't close. So this is what drives you insane, is all this flash. You still have the 100% parting line running all the way around the beast. The huge advantage to a cut mold is you don't have a parting line that runs entirely around the perimeter. You can cut only a fraction of it. And that is a huge labor savings when it comes time. Like if I had to clean a hundred of these, I would be looking for a very tall bridge to jump off of. A plus. <laughs> Absolutely A-plus sculpting job. Beautiful sculpts. Really nice. <clears throat> In fact, I'm going to rename him from now on. I'm going to call him King Kayakosaurus. Because, uh, yeah, these are beautiful, beautiful sculpts. Uh, his mold making is very clean. It's uh, very precise. The craftsmanship is impeccable. You still have all of the problems of a two-part clay-up mold. But really, that's about as clean as they get. Not bad. I'm pretty impressed. I have to say it. I'm still not going to do <laughs> still not going to do two part clay up molds cuz I'm too lazy. And it took and I just look at these and just know how much work it took to do that. Wow. And how this mold just can't solve the problems of making clean castings as well as a cut mold can. Still in all, pretty nice work, I'd say. Hey, I hope you liked this video. I hope you got something out of it. Thanks for watching. I will see you right now. Here's an update on what's going on with installing this driver for this laser. I took everyone's advice, went online and found the driver, downloaded it and unzipped it. And here's the folder sitting in my downloads. I ran the setup utility and it went just fine on my older Windows 10 computer. But interestingly enough, the installation failed on my brand new Windows 11 computer. That's what made me think that maybe I, I, the driver wouldn't install in Windows 11. When I plugged the computer into the laser, my device manager found the USB port and the driver, as you can see here. And it didn't matter which USB port I plugged it into, I got the same result. It all showed up just like it does here. So I said, look, problem is solved. So I started up Lightburn, for which I have a trial subscription, and it was unable to find the laser. 
it just basically just stopped working. Uh, what was also interesting is that my file manager can't see it either. And that's weird because it can see a USB drive without any problem. And again, I tried this same operation on every uh, USB port on the computer. So the logical conclusion is to blame the laser. But the thing is, I plugged my computer into my 3D printers and it couldn't see them either. So <laughs> it's not seeing any devices. And that's true, both of my brand new Windows 11 computer and the older 10 computer. So that's what's been going on. Thanks so much for sending in all your suggestions last week. It was really helpful to me. Uh, if you have any <laughs> thoughts, any ideas about what's going on here, uh, I'd love to hear from you. Really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I will see you at some point in the not too distant future. <laughs> Holy crap, Paula. Unbelievable, what a mess, what a, my life.